Hello AP Psychology students and welcome to the last section of chapter 5 on consciousness. Today we're going to be looking at a conscious altering drugs, which is kind of like health class 2.0. So this whole section all you need to remember is drugs are bad, okay? So repeat after me. Drugs are bad, okay? Good. Alright, so um, attempts to alter mood and consciousness is pretty universal. Uh, it crosses cultures, it goes back through history. Uh, finding things to alter, I guess, your stat status and, and output and viewpoint on life. Uh, some believe that it's a basic human need like food or water. Uh, and they live in Oregon, those people. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> William James was fascinated by the altering consciousness with nitrous oxide. You guys might know that as uh, laughing gas, stuff you get at the dentist. Uh, he was kind of hooked on that stuff. Uh, Freud, as we've mentioned before... I really like cocaine, although he did kick it later in life, but he used to prescribe it and use it himself. Uh, the 1960s made people more open about drugs as a gateway to an altered state of consciousness. We're seeing a resurgence in that in today's culture with the uh, push to legalize marijuana, uh, to legalize psychedelic mushrooms, and then in Oregon to legalize everything. Well, actually decriminalize, excuse me. Uh, not legalize. So let's look at it. Uh, a psychoactive drug is any substance that alters perception, mood, thinking, or memory, or behavior by changing the body's biochemistry. So anything you take or eat that changes your viewpoint, that changes your mood, changes your status, uh, and changes the chemistry inside of you is a drug, medically speaking. Uh, and so this is a picture of my wife on her honeymoon outside of the uh, Shakespeare Globe in London drinking a big cup of coffee from Starbucks. That is, that is a very popular, probably you could argue it's the most popular drug in the world, which is caffeine. Um, yes, in England, they do give it to you in a reusable mug that you go put and they wash it. It's not always throwing it away. So stimulants are uppers. Um, they activate motivational centers. They reduce activity in the inhibitory centers. They kind of get your body going. Uh, the most prevalent, the most popular in the world are caffeine and nicotine. Very powerful stimulants. Caffeine is the most widely used drug in the world. Um, I've already used some caffeine this morning. Had a couple of cups of, cups, a cup of coffee. Um, some of the harder ones, amphetamines are powerful. They can be abused easily. Um, amphetamine psychosis is a prolonged reaction to excessive use of stimulants. Um, and then there's methamphetamines, which are basically man-made amphetamines, which um, they're pretty pretty crazy. They they do terrible terrible things. Um, it's a very dangerous drug. <laughs> the rest of these also cocaine, crack, Adderall. Um, these are all stimulants. Adderall is prescribed for ADHD and ADD. Um, you also have the modern equivalent of it. My brain's not thinking right now. It'll come to me. Um, so we'll move on here. Uh, depressants, drugs that reduce the activity of the central nervous system to kind of slow things down. Uh, they may cause re relaxation, drowsiness, lowered inhibitions. Alcohol is the most widely abused and used in the world. Uh, moderate drinking, one to two beverages a day, does have some benefits in adults. And we're talking red wine, maybe beer. This is controversial in itself because moderate drinking sometimes turns into excessive drinking. Um, there's also sedatives and tranquilizers. In mild doses, they can, ca uh, they can cause calm and relaxation. They can be addic addictive and dangerous, especially if mixed with alcohol. Um, an example of this would be like Valium, which is very powerful sedative, especially if someone is nervous and they're going in for surgery and they need some. There's also inhalants, which are extremely dangerous. They're highly addic addictive because of the other chemicals, extremely dangerous. Uh, people cheese and huff and all that kind of stuff. They can cause permanent brain damage and even death. Next, we have opiates. Uh, they relieve pain. They mimic the release of endorphins and the opiates, the peptides, uh, in your body. Um, so they, affect, they mimic the effects of endorphin. Opium use goes back 7,000 years. Um, some other class of cl drugs that are classified as opiates, morphine, heroin, codeine, which is a very popular one in, in cough syrup, which then people mix with other stuff to make lean, and then methadone. Um, we have an opiate problem in our country with uh, fentanyl, the, the drug that kind of goes with it and all this, and, and we have a lot of uh, overdosing going on in our country, and opiates are very, very powerful. They're very scary, the painkillers and things like that. Prolonged use can damage the body. It also can lead to overdoses. Um, we've lost a lot of great artists and musicians to opiate addiction and overdosing, so stay away. 
Next, psychedelic drugs or hallucinogens. Um, they disrupt normal thought processes such as perception of time and space. They cause hallucinations, delusions. You have lysergic acid, dethyl, amide, which is LSD, mescaline, which is peyote, uh, psychocybin, um, which is magic shrooms or whatever, and then PCP, which um, law enforcement call the most dangerous drug in the world. Uh, there's the risk of bad trips, flashbacks, uh, whatever mood is happening when someone is <clears throat> tripping on those can be accentu accentuated. 25% uh, of users of psychedelic drugs experience flashbacks, 65% have bad trips. Um, they did lead to a lot of good music in the 60s, but stay away. Drugs are bad, okay? Um, some drugs fall outside of these categories, including marijuana or cannabis, because it, it is a, it's a depressant, but also a mild hallucinogen. Uh, it also increases appetite. There's a lot of weird things going on with marijuana. Uh, and so marijuana is classified in its own uh, place. Uh, THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, is a mild stimulant, but people react to it like it's a depressant. Uh, medical uses help with nausea and vomiting that come with chemotherapy. Uh, it is growing in popularity. It is being legalized across the country. It doesn't mean that, yes, you should just go try it. Uh, it does have side effects. There's a lot of tar, a lot of nicotine, or excuse me, chemicals that are coming in through smoking marijuana. Uh, it also stim it stunts the growth of the prefrontal cortex. It can turn it off. Uh, so some of the same effects of alcohol that are going on with the prefrontal cortex in terms of judgment uh, and then motivation can be inhibited by marijuana. So drugs produce psychological effects by acting on other brain, on the brain neurotransmitters. They increase or decrease the number that is going on. Uh, they can prevent some of them, the reabsor reabsorption of, of excess ones, so the reuptake and the bloxy effects of the neurotransmitter on nerve cells. Biochemical changes can alter cognitive and emotional functioning as well. Liquor affects memory and abstract thought is what they've found. Information stored while drinking is retrieved more slowly. If you drink too much, an object can turn off your hippocampus and then you, quote, black out and you don't form new memories. Light or moderate use of recreational drugs can damage the human brain. Uh, and so there, there are side effects. There's a lot of problems with using drugs, period. Even caffeine, something that seems as harmless as caffeine, can have side effects. People can develop headaches, they can have withdrawal symptoms uh, to not having their caffeine. Frequent use leads to tolerance and then also withdrawal symptoms. So individual factors, the, the psychology of drug effects, um, body weight, metabolism, initial state of a, emotional arousal, arousal, are you happy, are you sad, are you mad, personality, and then some people have higher or lower tolerance to drugs. Women generally get drunker than men with the same amount of alcohol. Um, they have lower body weight, maybe the different metabolism, um, kind, of, kind of a weird study. Um, there's also the experience with the drug. Some people have used it more frequently. Um, there's also the environmental setting, the context in which a person takes the drug. Uh, I told you guys about the, the study where they gave non-alcoholic beer to people and didn't tell them that, and then they watched them act drunk because they were in a party setting. And so the kind of the social context influenced how they reacted. And then the mental set, the expectations of the drug. You know, if you think you're going to get messed up or it's really going to help you out, chances are it's a placebo effect is going to help you out. So it's the think-drink effect. Both sexes uh, were aroused in studies even though they didn't drink vodka. Um, so they, they were given basically a, a drink saying, hey, this is going to help you. It's like a love potion. Um, they were told it was vodka. It wasn't, but they still became more aroused. They were more excited, uh, sexually speaking, because of the thinking, the, the mental set of what this will do. Uh, cultural setting factors in as well. Um, and the big thing to remember is you don't take the drugs, the drugs take you. That's all I have for today. If you have any questions, let me know. Remember, drugs are bad. Okay.